We will discuss burning sensation in lower abdomen, especially we will focus burning sensation in guts. If person has burning sensation in chest and upper part of the body, with high probability is gastroesophageal reflux disease or it peptic ulcer. But if person has burning sensation in lower part of abdomen and guts, but it still above this part, it's high probability irritable bowel syndrome or inflammatory bowel disease. This is most important here. So, so if it's upper part of the abdomen, it's gastroesophageal reflux disease. If it's very lower part, for example here, it can be urinary tract infections or uh, uh, cystitis. But if pain and burning sensation is here, and it's chronic of course, I'm not talking about acute pain. If it's chronic, higher probability it is irritable bowel syndrome or inflammatory bowel disease. Let's discuss each one. Irritable bowel syndrome is quite common. It affects around 15% of population. So when we say burning sensation in lower part of abdomen, in 30% of cases is irritable bowel syndrome, but generally it affects around 15% of population. Now, what, what is most common symptoms and what is characteristics and hallmarks? Most important in case of irritable bowel syndrome is diarrhea and constipation or both. Or, or alteration there. Diarrhea, then constipation, then diarrhea again, then constipation again, and etc. Pain is correlated with defecation. In many cases, defecation relieves pain. No structu structural or abnormalities and it's functional. So, in case of irritable bowel syndrome, we can't find any structural damage of our gastrointestinal tract. It's associated with change in form or appearance of stool and usually affects large intestine and it is chronic condition. It affects more commonly women from 20 to 40 age is usual diagnosed age. And we should rule out other possible causes first and then we can diagnose irritable bowel syndrome. So what is idea? What is idea of irritable bowel syndrome? When we eat short chain carbohydrates, um, it, it's type of carbohydrates, for example, it's lactose, uh, it's milk sugar, for example, we eat milk, drink milk. Milk is not absorbed in small intestines and it goes to large intestines and in large intestines it is fermented by local bacteria and it causes gas formation, it causes pain, bloating, it can cause diarrhea, sometimes constipation. So main idea of irritable bowel syndrome is type of foods, type of carbohydrates that is not digested well. Such carbohydrates are dairy products which contains lactose, milk, yogurt, cheese, uh, but yogurt in many cases, um, in, um, in many cases lactose content is less and it already contains bacterial flora which can uh, ferment and uh, easy to absorption of lactose. So uh, yogurt can be exception, but milk and other milk products uh, can cause uh, irritable bowel syndrome. Many fruits and vegetables such as pears, peaches, apples, watermelon, mangoes, figs, dates. Um, also uh, wheat products such as bread for example. Uh, 
and proceed meat also. So really many products can cause irritable bowel syndrome and such products are called uh, high FODMAP foods. Uh, now, what, uh, what is treatment of irritable bowel syndrome? Treatment is uh, low FODMAP, uh, FODMAP foods. So avoid foods with short chain carbohydrates. For example, protein, proteins and protein products contain less uh, short chain carbohydrates. Nuts contain um, uh, low, they are, nuts are low FODMAP products. Uh, also, the medications, for example, laxatives, if person has constipation, or antidiarrheal medication, if person has diarrhea, uh, sometimes antidepressants also helps. Spasmolytics also helps in many cases. That's irritable bowel syndrome. So, irritable bowel syndrome, most important is diarrhea, constipation, pain in, is associated with stool and defecation and after defecation pain is released because gases and stool is released and in intestinal wall are um, more relaxed and suited that's why now second most common cause of lower abdominal pain is inflammatory bowel disease it's a more serious condition than irritable bowel syndrome. So they look like each other, right? Irritable bowel syndrome, inflammatory bowel disease. But they are different diseases. They look like but different. Um, it affects 0.7% of population. So inflammatory bowel disease is much rare disease. And it consists of two, two types of disease. Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. So inflammatory bowel disease has two types. First is Crohn's disease, second is ulcerative colitis. And what's the main difference? Main difference between them is location. Crohn's disease can develop anywhere of our digestive system, from our mouth to our anus. And ulcerative colitis usually affects large intestines and rectum that's ulcerative colitis but Crohn's disease can affect any part of our digestive system they have common symptoms such as diarrhea abdominal pain cramping blood in the stool fatigue reduced appetite and weight loss the idea of this disease is inflammation you see inflammation here, inflammation here, inflammation here. Inflammation is main characteristic of this disease. Inflammation, which can, uh, over time from this inflammation, can develop ulcers. That's idea of this disease. And it happens different parts of the body. And characteristic of this disease is, in case of Crohn's disease, it can have extra digestive symptoms out the symptoms are outside intestine uh, such as skin lesions joint pain eye inflammation for example in this picture you see skin lesion and this lesion has central part of necrosis and inflammation around inflammation and central part of necrosis inflammation and central part of necrosis that's Crohn's disease. And now what about uh, ulcerative colitis? Ulcerative colitis more commonly have bloody stool. And because of losing blood, anemia can develop. So if anemia and bloody stool, it can be, and more commonly, ulcerative colitis. If there is joint problems and skin problems and different types of problems even eye inflammation is Crohn's disease if we ask which of them is more common ulcerative colitis is more common ulcerative colitis is more common than Crohn's disease 
Ulcerative colitis diagnosis usually in young ages, uh, young adulthood actually, not in, not in children but young adults. Crohn's disease can develop any ages literally. So in diagnostic, of course, important gastroscopy, it, it depends on location of the disease or also colonoscopy. Um, and treatment, uh, immunosuppressive therapy and corticosteroids can be effective. Why? Because uh, there is no known reason of this disease, but it is thought that it is caused by uh, immune reaction on bacteria, it's genetic, environmental, and by a real immune reaction on bacteria or viral infection. So it can be immune response it can be result of immune response that's why immunosuppressants and corticosteroids are more effective also healthy lifestyle healthy diet exercise it's general recommendation for almost any disease diet exercise healthy uh, foods uh, and healthy lifestyle this recommendation are universal that's all i wanted to say thank you for your, for your interest Thank you for your uh, listening. Uh, if you like my videos, please thumbs up. If you like my channel, please subscribe. Thank you very much. Bye for now.